Hi, this is Exy, and this is another response to Matt Quigley. Uh, I just want to clarify a few points. Uh, I'm guessing I didn't explain myself well after the first one, so I'm going to give it another go. Um, if you've got any other questions, go at me. Right, um, first point you made, uh, the adenine synthesis. In a whole video, uh, you were saying that you're making up out of these toxic chemicals, uh, hydrogen cyanide and ammonia. And you are, but the point to remember is that there is no life for them to be toxic against at this point. Uh, all you're getting is chemicals, you're building chemicals up into larger chemicals. There's no life, there's nothing that will fall prey to toxic chemicals. You can't kill anything because there's no life. So, I mean, the toxicity of them is irrelevant. Life's not going to come on for millions of years later, so that's not really a thing. Um, also, as a side to that, the second point, if you don't like that, there are a bunch of uh, extremophiles, which are these uh, creatures, sometimes bacteria, sometimes multicellular, who can survive in ridiculously insane conditions, acidic temperature, pressure, salt content. Uh, I'll put a few of them that are worth looking at uh, up there for you. Um, really worth having a look. Some of them really interesting. Um, and next point, uh, bases. You were saying that in the video that Polar did, they're only looking at adenine. So for the other bases, there is a paper that came out recently by Douglas Leroux and Pierre Ronya. And in this, they're looking at the formation of adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, uracil, as well as ribose and deoxyribose, all being formed in hydrothermal systems using just formaldehyde and hydrogen cyanide. So that's just your two reactants in different ratios in these hydrothermal systems be able to form every base you need for life as well as ribose and deoxyribose so you've got everything you need to start life being formed from these two chemicals a uh, point you made was that because oxygen was in the other bases they couldn't have formed because the oxygen in, in the atmosphere would be too corrosive and break them down um, you've made a mistake there you made a faulty assumption in that you said you're confusing atomic oxygen with molecular oxygen. So because there is oxygen in the molecule doesn't mean it came from molecular oxygen in the atmosphere. Uh, if you look at volcanoes, they check out a bunch of carbon oxides, carbon dioxide, sulfur oxides, and more importantly in terms of this paper, formaldehyde, not out of volcanoes, but formaldehyde, hydrogen cyanide, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, sulfurs, all of those are would have been around in a prebiotic earth. So everything you need for life would would have been there. Um, right, yes, you made a statement uh, that oxygen was so reactive and that's using it in oxygen fires uh, to get the heat up. But the heat of a flame is not due to the um, reactivity of the oxygen in the fire, it's due to the concentration of radicals. So by breaking down, oxygen is quite happy to exist as a stable dye radical, uh, but the ability for oxygen to form the dye radical has nothing to do with the reactivity of it. So, um, the reactive of oxygen doesn't really affect it, it's just the concentration of radicals. Okay, and the viruses. Okay, um, I'm aware they're parasites. What I, w what I said in my original video, if you check, was that I'm not saying viruses were the first type of life, I'm saying that they something like them would have been. So I think they work quite nice as a precursor or as I don't like using the term, but it's a tr transitional form to go from your reproducing chemicals to your first signs of life. Um, 
I'm fully aware they're not alive. I don't treat them as alive. They're an example of something that passes on genes and reproduces with mutations. So there's a clear precedent there for something that could move into life. They have been described as being on the verge of life by several scientists several times. And yeah, so for African, yeah. As for in parasites, yeah, it's um they may well have started out as being non parasitic, not a virus, but something like a virus, as non parasitic. But as soon as cells came up, a mutation developed that made them parasitic, so they didn't need the reproduction. You can lose all the reproduction and you could lose a lot less energy. You could just use it for all your other functions and just use another cell to do all your hard work. So in that case, they're using less energy, they're getting the same results. It's obviously a better solution. So maybe that could have been where virus came from. This is me hypothesizing, just as a possibility. But that could be a way of how viruses moved up. And the DNA and RNA language. Okay. Again, um, I think we're kind of arguing the same point here. In that our, the ribosome only ever needs to read messenger RNA. It never needs to do go anywhere near DNA at all. Only needs to do RNA. Um, and the RNA is fully compatible with DNA. Um, the bonds are completely identical. Chemical bonds are exactly the same. The same number of hydrogen bonds for the same bases. Only difference is one methyl group that's not involved in the bonding. So, are the DNA and RNA completely compatible? No need for translation or language change at all. And it's just the ribosome that's reading off the RNA. And you don't the the RNA came first. So you don't need, it wasn't that there's DNA and needs to translate to RNA to then be read to make more DNA. It's been the RNA that was translated to make more RNA, translated more RNA. And the progression to DNA came a lot later. So, and as I said, the RNA and DNA are completely compatible. No worries there. Another point about thermodynamics. Um, I was talking about the... Um, the reactions of the bases, primitive bases, primitive RNA and DNA coming together and they're being governed by thermodynamic laws and the chemical laws for how they would bind together. And I wasn't suggesting that thermodynamics were alive, or the fire is alive, or crystals, but that if you have two reactants and they're going to react to form a product in a chemical reaction and there's more than one product then you can have a thermodynamically favoured product and a kinetically favoured product. Sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're different. But depending on the concentration of reactants, your temperature, your pressure, uh, you can change which one is favoured in the reaction, so which one's going to be more highly produced. And if you look at these hydrothermal vents, where the chemicals moving up and around, they're going in, they're heating up, moving up, coming out, cooling off, dropping down in a convection current, you're getting a lot of different conditions so uh, lots of different reactions can be favoured at different points in the cycle so what I was saying by that was just the there's a lot of thermodynamics going on in that cycle and that a lot of these reactions are governed by the physical conditions they're in and so as the physical conditions change a lot the outcomes of the reactions can change a lot so all I was suggesting was that the replicating chemicals coming together is governed by the environment they're in and it's it's not just going to be one product all the time due to the different states of the chemicals um, I think that's about it for now uh, you made a point of microization actually as well uh, that you wanted you start off with a product and to make it smaller takes higher technology but when you look at the building blocks of life, you need to build them into something. So you're starting off with these small compounds and building them up into something to your RNA, your DNA, lipids, cell walls, and all that. So, um, yeah, I think starting simple and becoming more complex is a more plausible way of doing it. 
Um, I think that's all for now. Uh, the other thing, uh, if you're going to say the name, uh, go with XE, because EXE FBM gets a bit of a mouthful after a while. Uh, I hope that's kind of dealt with everything. If you've got any other questions, uh, get back to me, let me know. But otherwise, I hope that helps. Take care.